Today, we focus inside the water mill and prepare for electricity and plumbing while unexpected problems on the homestead pull our attention in another direction. Broken fridges and generators and showers and pumps. Water and oh my. Oh my. <laughs> Welcome back to our channel. If you're new around here, we're Brittany and Drew, two hopeful adventurers who got married and after eight years of van life, found our dream property and moved across the globe to Portugal where we're now documenting the journey of transforming this historic water mill into our very first home, not on wheels. Now, let's take in a deep breath and let it out. Let the adventure begin. Para trás. É, yeah, sim. Uh, não faz mal que ir um pouco de grita para cima da areia, não faz mal. Ah, aqui é sim, perfeito. Sim, tá Primeira vez aqui? Ou... Não, não. não. Antes. Ah, o outro, outro senhor. Com yeah. a machine. Ah, ah entendi. O outro senhor. Sim. O outro tom. Yeah, yeah. É, é. Sim. First the sand and now the Brita, as they call this type of gravel, all of which are going to be used for the final stages of our castle wall retention project, which we are nearing the finish line for. At the logo. And just like that, another load delivered. They're coming back with a whole nother truckload of Brita, some more bags of cement. It's really important that we're here on the ground for where all these projects are happening. The contractors, they just feel like it gives us a lot more control over the projects, a lot more involvement. And we're here able to film it and share it with you guys. And one more thing I wanted to add, if you guys want to see some behind the scenes of things we're doing more in real time, head over to our Patreon page. Our patrons, we love you guys and we share a lot of things over there. Some really cool things that we're doing before they go live on YouTube. So check it out. All right, our load of cement is here. Fish! It's awesome, move our in front of mice. Perfecto. We're gonna dump it up front right here so we can toss more of it into this cavity and the rest, rest into that area. That's where we want it. You guys almost got buried under there. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool. Oh, uh, oh. Okay. During that same time, our electrician and plumber arrived to mark where exactly we wanted our plugs, lights, three-way switches, ceiling fans, sinks, toilets, bathtub, shower, washer, dryer, and all of our kitchen appliances to go. It was a little overwhelming. Oh, and for anyone wondering, that blue paint luckily is water-based and does wash off. And Drew returned just in time. Hieroglyphs, like ancient times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the other is probably a socket outlet there because the ceiling for this room is supposed to be 2.2 or 2.3. Okay. So the distance of the floor and then up. You also have thermal, yeah? Yeah, because the okay. idea is the hot, the agua oh, quench. Okay, you push it key. I'm yep. gonna put a normal socket and one separated just for that. Because Perfect. The and you push your bigger, way. okay. We've since decided to make this upper area our laundry room, where our hot water tank that we'll use when the clouds prevent us from using solar will also be stored. We still plan on putting a bathroom downstairs in this area, and we have other ideas for smart ways to incorporate little mudroom features near our main entryways. I think the light's just on the ceiling in the hallway. Yeah. 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 I had one more light. Yeah. 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 To put it on one more Tell us. Since this one will be a door. I'm thinking we should have for sure a light that shines onto the patio forever in the jacuzzi in yep. the far future. He's going to put a whole box out there so we can rig up lighting and switches and all that outside. Okay. So, very important stuff. If the Murphy bed is up and your desk is in there, 
You want plugs for your computers? Yeah, yeah, yep. We put in there, and same with like TV internet connections. They have to run for licensing. They'll be right there too. Yeah. That'll be like a little command center, we'll call it. Okay. Perfect. So one question they had was TV in this room. It's so hard to know about TVs. <laughs> I just want to protect the screen. Okay. I don't want them in the back. Yeah. Okay. One from before down here, and another one for step yeah, a little light up there would be great. It was surprising to us how this process was done, since we had no idea what to expect. But what was clear was that we would need to get some more specific measurements nailed down before they would return to cut the channels that they would be running all of the lines in. Here. I think the outlet should be there. But luckily our guys had a lot of experience and they were very helpful and kind. Two for one. The iron is going to be made of concrete or wood and stuff. Concrete, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think concrete. Concrete. This will all be the counter here. And then we want to create like almost like you go in for the food, like a pantry. Probably here. Yeah. 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 Then our builder, who's overseeing and coordinating all of the works, arrived. If you've seen our roof rebuild series, you might recognize him. You need more of that blue paint, and you can paint our whole wall for us. <laughs> and then the same idea. One light there and one over there shining out onto the water. If you have three, three lights, three light feels and better, right? Because yeah. of the angles? Okay. Yeah. If you have three, yeah. you can point one that area. It's all more clear. It's all me there. Yeah, it's much better. Okay, three. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We, we need a ladder. Yeah, yeah, we know where. Do you want lighting down there? It would be a really cool effect. It could be just pre installation, but the tube is. Yeah, there. no, it'd be really great. So there is an opening right here. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're gonna have it open to see down with lights and everything. We'd everything like to do. It's pretty. Yeah, we'd like to do something. Okay. So let's make some connection down here, and in the future we can do whatever. Okay, so I'll go from the top and mark on top. Yeah, in 1942. Bloody hell. Yeah. I think they refixed it though at yeah, that yeah, year. Yeah. That wasn't like the and original. The date when. Yeah. But yeah. So I want to make a connection somewhere over here that's like pre installation oh, that in the future I can just run a strong okay, power so connection. You can with a box here? Yeah, wherever is closest for you to wire up. And here we also need the box of earth. Okay. Something smaller. Uh -huh. I feel like a caveman. You have very good handwriting. No, I don't. <laughs> For a stick, that's not easy. <laughs> yeah, for, for the stick, it's not easy. And then the, the one for, um, for the electric. Yeah. So a little bit bigger, so you can have a tube of 25 or 32 okay. for a stronger cable to give power there. Perfect. And later, if you want to take the container off and make a house. Okay. Awesome. With so many possibilities and measurements running through our mind, there was just one place that we needed to go in order to get some clarity and answers for the next steps forward. My tape measure, Brittany's tape measure. Oh, that's fun. I get a baby tape measure. <laughs> so this morning, our electrician and builder showed up a little bit unexpectedly, but they basically said that we need to have the measurements for not only like our mattress so they can figure out where the nightstand plugs go, but like the measurements for our household appliances, our electro, electro, electro domesticos. domesticos. <laughs> the washer, the dryer, the stove, oven, refrigerator. So we are trying to figure out what size appliances in the house. It's a lot to wrap our heads around after never doing this ever. I want to point out these are the US sized washers. Like this is what you'll normally find in an American household. But here it is extra, extra large and you will not find a dryer. Not down this row and not down this row. 
I'm measuring for our custom fit so we can get our washer and dryer snug in the room we want it. There are a lot of washer dryer combos, but we just want to keep them separate. Eight kilos of laundry. That's a really expensive one, but they price them based off of like how quiet they are, how much power they use. 192 kilowatts. That's, That's a lot. A ton. Yeah. You know what? These are dryers. Oh. You found the dryer ding, section. Ding, ding. <laughs> you found the dryer section. Oh, thanks guys. You helped me. <laughs> no wonder they're more expensive. They use a lot more power than the washing machine. Yeah, like 50 kilowatts for a hundred cycle. These are like 200. Washers versus dryers. One thing that drives me absolutely crazy is when we're out doing our wash and I'm about almost done with the washer, somebody comes in from their home with wet clothes and throws them in the dryer. Because a lot of people don't have yeah, a dryer. I know. Because they cost... The energy use. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Not only the cost of the machine is like triple, the energy is a lot too. I guess that's why people use clotheslines in this sunny country. Clotheslines are not only the most energy efficient way to dry your clothes, but they're also the most romantical. Here's a little compilation of all the pretty places we've dried our laundry en plein air over the years. I am in a maze of laundry. It's already six o'clock, but we still have at least five hours left of sun. <sighs> the hardest part about van life is doing the laundry. It's not really, but it's one of them. <laughs> yeah, look at all this. Ah! A free way of doing it. And just start pushing away like you're got it on the wash cycle. And then I'm the rinser, so I'm over here, I do the rinsing. Look at those laundry muscles. My lower back is killing me. I should start a service called Sexy Men Who Do Laundry. That's how we're going to make money campgrounds. Money on the road. Around here in the campground. <laughs> this is the Adriatic and we're in Tisno, Tisno, Croatia. And it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It's the first time we've done laundry in like four months. And this is the second drying phase. Our neighbors are being awesome letting us use some of the lines out here. And we use the trees a little bit too. All yes. the trees. Gotta love when you see a bra hanging in the trees. Laundry day. Another adventure <laughs> in the books. And don't you worry, we definitely plan on drying our clothes this way in the future. But it's always nice to have a backup, especially after never having one. You know what's really interesting? Those machines are way more effective, efficient with their power use, very expensive. These use way more power, way cheaper. So do you want to pay a higher electricity bill or do you want to pay more right now for the machine? That's interesting, right? Decisions, decisions. But there are a few creature comforts that we just want in our home. We have never had a washer and dryer in a home that we've lived in besides our childhood homes. So I think we're going for a washer and a dryer. I know it might sound extravagant. We will dry on the clothesline whenever possible, but in the winter, that luxury does not really exist up in our cloudy little mountain village. Leave it to YouTubers at the appliance store, guys. This is what happens. <laughs> They're the ones putting the cameras. What are they doing now? Look at them. They're putting okay. it in the oven. We're gonna put it in the oven here. We're gonna okay, get this shot. <laughs> Crazy things we do. So this is sort of our favorite stove oven combo at the moment. We um, want to go with gas. We had our architect and engineer put together a gas project for this. This is one of the larger ones, but one of our factors here is we have to be able to fit two pizzas, a gluten-free and a Drew pizza, at least. And then based on whatever oven we choose, we choose an extractor fan separately as well. I kind of think you want to keep the same brand though. If you get a unit yeah. of one brand, you probably want a matching hood. I'm guessing sort of the same with the washer dryer, but like the kitchen units can be different brands. Just there's certain things you want to match, but I'm not loyal to a brand because yeah. I don't even know what brand's best. <laughs> Unless we're talking about solar powered portable generators because there are a lot of them on the market these days and we've tried a good number of them. But after eight years of living off grid, the number one most reliable, quiet, robust and easy to use is Blue Eddy. 
It's a nice bright sunny day out here and we're gonna be plugging in to the Blue Eddy. We got the solar pumping, which is so nice that we can use renewable energy to power up our equipment on days like today. And it's so nice not to run a generator that's loud, noisy, disruptive. We have to yell over each other. The Blue Eddy is the thing that we love having in our container over here to power our lives. Here we have the AC300 3000 watt pure scene wave inverter that supports up to four of these Blue Eddy B3 300 expansion batteries, making for a grand total of over 12,000 watts of power core. Which means if you're looking for a 24-7 emergency backup system for your home in case of a natural disaster or power outage, this system can power your basic family needs for days. With those two 350 PV solar panels out there, right now we're producing 530 watts of energy. That's pretty awesome. And you can even break it down and see how much wattage is coming into each panel. You can also recharge by wall socket, car charging, or lead acid battery. We like to keep them dry each night, and put them away so they don't get worn quicker than they need to. So we just set them inside the container where they're housed. <laughs> and they slide and tuck in nicely right behind the generator. There we go. All right. Recently, we've been having problems with the fridge inside of our camper, but luckily, thanks to Blue Eddy, we can plug in our backup fridge and prevent our food from spoiling while we figure out what is wrong with the other one. And check this out. Our fridge has been on for 24 hours, and look at we still have 48% of juice left in the Blue Eddy. And Blue Eddy uses Life PO4 batteries, which stands for lithium iron phosphate, the safest, most stable material for lithium ion batteries, making them much less of a fire hazard. Plus they deliver an extended battery life with over 3,500 cycles up to 80% of the original capacity. Also, since they don't use heavy metals like nickel, cobalt, and manganese that can damage our environment, Life PO4 batteries are non-toxic, emission-free, and ultra-friendly to our environment and planet. This power unit is incredible. Right now we got a grinder being ran in the back hidden patio area, a cement mixer out front, and a jackhammer inside it. That's pushing 3000 watts. And I mean, that's incredible. What we love is the fact that we can add on expansion batteries as needed and the fact that they are stackable so they are efficient on space. Plus they come with a four year warranty and lifetime customer support. We truly love Blue Eddy's products. And if you wanna see how they can add immense power and peace of mind to your life, right now Blue Eddy is offering our community $100 off of your purchase using our code adventure at the link below. Now, speaking of refrigerators, one of my favorite Portuguese words <laughs> is actually refrigerator. It's frigorifico, which Drew always gets his tongue tied and says like, Frederico. <laughs> Shout out to all, the all of the Fredericks out there, yeah. But I'm actually really excited to see that they have frigorificos with ice and water dispensers in the door. I don't know if we'll actually get one of those, but I wasn't sure if they even had them here. Americanos. I think that's so funny that that's what the super large double door fridges are called. That's actually when the electricians were over, they go, do you want an American fridge? <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? I want a Portuguese fridge that's large. Yes. He's like, you want an American fridge? <laughs> How funny. The things that we've brought the world <laughs> are large refrigerators. Wow. That's really nice. This determines the amount of space in between our countertop and our island, you know, it like, it all affects each other. How wide the door swings. Yeah, like if our fridge is in there and we put the sink over here on the island, like, is there enough room when you open the doors? And you don't put something like the dishwasher yeah. to interfere with the door. A lot of things. Versus like the half door comes out that much. Yeah, so there. it's a little bit more efficient. Versus like that. Big swing. Mm. But I like this price way better versus Americano. Twice as much for two doors. A lot of houses have these size of fridges in them. That's 200. No, if I'm taller than the fridge, it's not gonna do it for us, no. <laughs> After eight years of no room for leftovers or the space to meal prep for the week, constantly calculating what we were buying at the store and wondering how slash if we would manage to fit all of our groceries in yet again. Whoa, our fridge glides now, love it. I am looking forward to a big, normal-sized fridge. Oh my! 
It just feels comforting to walk through so many options sometimes. I mean, this is kind of weird to have four doors though. It's like a, a sedan for the family. <laughs> Put your seatbelts on. <laughs> I like that. I like the tall ones. They're super tall. I mean, it's a good use of space, but... <laughs> the Drew shelf. <laughs> all of Drew's snacks. I could keep all my snacks up there and you can eat them. <laughs> I'm game for that. I guess it could work. I mean, look how tall those are. So the wall between the door and the window is 130 centimeters? Yeah, this is 90. Oh. That's not as wide as I thought. I thought the fridges were like gonna fill that whole space and we couldn't put a fridge there. Is this the widest fridge? <laughs> this regulation size. <laughs> here, here, this is a really wide one. 91. That's way less than 130. We are talking centimeters, guys. For all you Americans, we're used to the imperial system. 2.5 centimeters equals an inch. So 100 centimeters would equal 40 inches. That's oh, look interesting. Look at that, little ice cube maker. Oh, oh look at that, that's fancy. Cute. Ding, ding. Oh. It's making me hungry in here. I'm hungry too. I'm ready for dinner. All right, I got a couple more measurements to make. Let's get out of here. Dinner date. The Hobby 600. The camper in front of us is from Poland. Polaska. Follow that rig. It's gotta be going somewhere good. I think I gotta switch our ventilation to inside air only. It's a little stinky. <laughs> they have the funnest roundabouts in Albufera. Ten euros for a parking ticket. Luckily not ours, just interesting to know the price. Do we need? Yes, we do have to pay. I got my little paper. The other one. Ah, uh, there it is. This is the best kind of menu. You just get to look at the fun picture and it'll appear in front of you. I don't know, that one looks really good. The Euro with Mitaka. I think it might be mushroom gravy. Oh. <laughs> But you know what? We're in a Greek restaurant. I gotta get moussaka. Moussaka. I have no words. Just beautiful. Oh my gosh. Moussaka. No. <laughs> we couldn't resist this sign. Or this gelato. My first gelato since summer. They're cheering for you. Yeah. So good. Mmm. It's really soft. Taking some measurements so we can uh, figure out how big to make our island. To figure out how to fit the appliances in. Okay, so the fridge being 70 centimeters plus an 80 centimeter wide space in between the countertop and the island means that our island would begin at about 150 centimeters, which is basically where I'm looking right here on the tape measure. Which gives us a nice distance out here that we can put the island and then put a couple stools. You guys might remember about a year ago, we were having problems with our fridge cooling. Everything in the freezer was defrosting, causing problems. Well, we're experiencing that again, where the pilot light on the refrigerator for a camper van keeps failing. It doesn't seem to stay ignited. I think the orifice, the whole stack that had the rust in it, it's gotta be cleaned again. So I've got the back of the fridge open here, got all my tools out here where the gas comes out of, and I'm gonna try to blow some air down through the stack. Hopefully we can resolve our refrigerator problem. Living out here on the land, off grid, it's a lot of work guys, like just keeping things maintained in the camper van, making sure there's enough water pumped up here for the lagoon to use for washing dishes, for showering, just daily life. We definitely don't take things for granted, especially when we stay at friends and family's homes, but living out here, it's a little tough. Like don't take for granted the switch that you can flip for electricity, the water come out of your tap when you go to just wash your face, brush your teeth. Out here, we have to make sure we maintain everything.
All right, that seems a lot better. There's a lot of particles coming out of there. This right here is one of the pieces that goes on top of the stack that keeps the refrigerator cold. And you can see there's a ton of rust in that. Builds up in here, and then when it heats, moisture builds up and prevents our fridge from cooling properly. So you wanna get in there and get it all out. This right here is the funny curly cue candy cane looking thing that helps redirect the heat so that it cools the element, gets the freon moving, and creates the coolant effect. Looks like a fishing lure. I got everything back together. Hey Brittany, yeah. you mind starting the fridge? Let's give this a try. Yeah. It, like it, it did, it started right up. Let's keep our fingers crossed. It's such a small space, it's just hard to access. Guys, our house is an absolute disaster. We have stuff everywhere and Drew's hiding under the table. Trying to make sure I show my plumber's crack. Our sink. Our shower, bathroom, none of that's working, so. First it was the fridge, now it's the water. But you said you just ordered one, no? Yeah, ironically, for our pressure washer. It arrives though tomorrow night. Yeah, <laughs> which might mean we have to go two days without a water system pump. So back to the old gravity feed, <sighs> dump and pour, using cups, water bottles. And of course, it's the day where I got like cabbage and mushrooms fresh from the market. So they're like totally not clean you know like the dirt covered vegetables <laughs> yeah look at these hands oh, no. appliances or electro domesticos are great when they work but remember it doesn't matter if you live in a camper van on a boat in a house in an apartment your appliances break <laughs> yeah so hopefully you got good ones that last for a long time but there's no really telling anymore or a handy man by your side i mean truth be told this thing probably was used for 20 years because our camper is what 2004 yeah pretty insane but i don't think anybody truly lived in this camper like us before this that's true it's getting yeah. some a heavy usage a spirit too is living large these days ladies and gentlemen we have a solution the shower because our hot water heater pump thing is on the outside of our camper you know what's even more special this is hot water too might be the best our dishes ever been washed better than a dishwasher you're the best dishwasher but i think we will be getting a dishwasher <laughs> yeah it'd be greatly wonderful on this morning's run there's a giant javelin wow okay i'm gonna go now okay bye welcome back to the container i know it's been some time since we've brought you in here the other day it was driving me absolutely nuts so that i can't find things in here so i reorganized all my shelves back here and i got a whole nother set of shelves that i'm gonna build so that way i can get more things that are in the mill into the container, keep them well organized. Can just make the best use of the space in here. I wanted to surprise Drew by doing the laundry and having clean sheet night, but look at all of this laundry. The hard part is gonna be carrying it. <laughs> because I'm doing some plumbing and it seems like our little tiny 12 volt pump for the water system in the camper has went kaput. We did it. Next stop, the grocery store, because that's where we do our laundry, at least when it's that big of a load. Let's just hope this all fits into the 18 kilo washer. And we never separate by colors. We just don't have that luxury. <laughs> uh, 
what a day. I thought one load of laundry would be simple, but right when I went to take the stuff out of the washer and put it in the dryer, somebody arrived with their washing from their home because a lot of people here don't have their own dryers in their homes. But with this rainy weather, a lot of people are bringing their laundry to dry at the supermarket dryer machines. So instead of waiting, I decided to go to another laundromat, which was like five minutes away. And then when I arrived to the new laundry place, there was no parking spot, which then required me to carry a very heavy bag of wet laundry into the laundromat. Anywho, five hours later, I got one load of laundry done. At least it's all dry, it's washed. Clean sheet night is here. All right, time to get the laundry inside. So you're saying the only way to get full comprehensive is to go through you guys for both our camper and our truck. I do understand if I strange, but even if you try to get quotes everywhere, Mr. Drew, you will see that they will offer you a very good premium, of course, but it is not a full comprehensive. Was all of that about? Another frustration in my life. Hmm. Uh, insurance companies my goodness they keep racking up the premiums and especially for people like us who don't file claims whether it's health insurance or auto insurance this company is saying that we are forced to have full comprehensive coverage on any vehicle over 10 years which i agree in full comprehensive insurance is definitely the right thing to have for the caravan for a truck but what they're saying is that the caravan itself will be dropped from the policy if we don't get coverage with them in this policy or have third-party insurance on the truck itself, the camper van insurance just gets dropped in general. And we can't just have a single policy with them and not even take the truck and insure it with another carrier. Something just mm -hmm. feels fishy about that situation. And then the representative from before never actually explained this whole situation and charged us hundreds and hundreds of euros to we insure knew. this caravan mm. without disclosing that. And I called up just to ask for a no claims bonus report that shows that we haven't made claims in the last year in Europe or because US companies won't do that and give you like a whole track record to be able to provide to European insurance companies. So therefore I don't have that. And that's what that call is all about. And then he just explained this whole jumble of monkeys in a barrel came flying out so uh, <sighs> just well just, just want to focus on land projects I guys know. we want our appliances we want our patio done we want things around here built yeah. not to be working on the paperwork aspect of our lives so. or truck or caravan or broken fridges and generators and showers and pumps. water and oh my oh my <laughs> oh, yeah. send us some thoughts and prayers for peace and strength. Uh, don't worry, we'll get through this. We always do. We're just having a little moment, which we're all allowed to have from time to time. And on that note, we're gonna enjoy a beautiful pastry and we will see you next episode. You guys are the best. It's so flaky and sweet. Ooh. Mm. It's a little blurry. There you go. <laughs> There's the shot. Oh, we just got some crumbs on the floor. Kitties will be in for those. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>